Now we can look at aldehydes. For aldehydes, they have the functional group with a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, and a hydrogen. And this is one of the two compounds that has something called a carbonyl group, which is a C double bond O. The general formula for an aldehyde is R, C double bond O, H, or when it's condensed, it's R, C, H, O. Please make sure you remember this one. It is one of the more confusing ones. We will not be talking about the physical properties of aldehydes at this point. I will summarize it later in one chart. The basics for naming aldehydes is that we want to find the longest continuous carbon chain that includes the carbon that is doubly bonded to the oxygen, the carbonyl carbon. The ending for the aldehydes is AL, so it will be AL. We see that the rest of the hydrocarbon chain is single bonded. So we will put an AN in front of that, so that is anal. We indicate the number of carbons in the main chain in front of that, and then we want to give a number to the aldehyde. But because the aldehyde is always on the end of the chain, it is always in position one. So we don't actually put in number one, but it still determines the direction of counting. The aldehyde will always be number one. Next, we add any substituents and appropriately number those. So let's try some. Again, notice that we do have some common names that you do not need to recognize. The only one that you might see commonly is formaldehyde, which is commonly used as a preservative in biology. And from your experience with that, you may not be surprised to find out that aldehydes have a very strong smell. All right, let's look at compound A. We're going to find the functional group. Here we see a C double bond O, and we see that there's a hydrogen on it. Now in this case, there's a hydrogen on both sides. All that matters is that one of the two sides is a hydrogen. We now know that this is an aldehyde. So the ending will be AL. All other bonds are carbon single bonded, and so they'll have an AN in front of that. So that's anal. Yes, I know how bad this looks so far. Our next step is to put in how many carbons are in the main chain. In this case, there's only one carbon, so this will be methanal. We would next number it, and again, we do not put a number in for the aldehyde, so we are done. Let's look at compound B. Here we have a C double bond O. It has a hydrogen off to one side, so this is an aldehyde. The ending will be AL. Next, we're going to put AN in front of that, because everything else is single bonded. And then we're going to indicate how many carbons are in the main chain, including the carbonyl carbon. That gives us two, and we have ethanol. Numbering, we're going to see that that is on carbon number one, as it must be, and so we do not put a number in. Our whole name is ethanol. Sometimes people want to know if they will be marked wrong for putting in the one, and yes, in this case, you will be marked wrong for putting in the one, because it specifically says aldehydes do not get numbers. And since it is on the chart that you are being provided, you should be able to recognize that there should be no number for where the aldehyde is. On the other hand, substituents will still have their numbers. So let's go to compound C. This one's a little harder to spot that it's a C double bond O. I'm just going to remind you that when we see CHO, that is an aldehyde, and we can see that by drawing it out. First, we have the carbon chain to the left. We can draw that as an R. We have the carbon itself. We have one hydrogen attached to it and one oxygen. That shows that we only have three bonds to carbon. We know there must be four. We cannot add any more atoms, but we can also see that oxygen only has one bond, and it would like to have two. So we're going to put a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So we now recognize this as an aldehyde. Our ending will be AL. In front of that, we're going to put in AN to say that everything else is single bonded. Then we're going to put in the fact that there are three carbons on the main chain, so this is propanal. No number because the aldehyde will be number one. Now let's look at compound D. You're going to like this one. So it's an aldehyde. We see the C double bond O with a hydrogen off of it. It's an aldehyde. The ending will be AL. In front of that, we're going to put AN to indicate the hydrocarbon chain is an alkane. And then we're going to put in how many carbons are in the main chain. In this case, we see there are four carbons on the main chain. So this is butanal. Not quite what it looks like. And again, we do not give it a number because the aldehydes do not get a number. All right, let's do compound E. Here, it's hard to tell that this is an aldehyde. 
but remember that each of these dashes that you see hanging off are actually bonded to hydrogens. So we have an aldehyde, the ending will be al. Next, we see that it is all single bonded, so we're going to put an in front of that. We see that there are four carbons in the main chain, so yes, it's butanal again. But in this case, we do have a substituent. So we're going to put that substituent name in front of it. It's a one carbon chain, so this will be methyl butanal. Now we do need to give a number for that substituent. And what number do you choose? Is it three or is it two? Well, normally we want to give it the lower number, but in this case, we know that it is going to be 3-methylbutanal because even though it's a higher number, the priority was given to the aldehyde, so we had to count in that direction. Now, let's try drawing some aldehydes. Now, let's look at how to draw the aldehydes from a given name. We'll start with compound A. As usual, we're going to look at the end. We see that there's an aldehyde, everything else is single bonded, and we're going to see the pent, which tells us that there are five carbons in the main chain. So we draw our five carbons. We attach the aldehyde to either one end or the other. It doesn't matter which end. We put on one hydrogen. I always draw that hydrogen in initially because otherwise it's easy to forget. And then we're going to put our attachments. So on carbon number five, we'll put our two bromine atoms. And that is our carbon skeleton. Our last step is to add in the right number of hydrogens. Be aware that we don't want to put too many bonds where the aldehyde is. One of the most common mistakes I see with this is that people put an additional hydrogen on. Count your number of bonds. Every carbon gets four bonds. Every oxygen gets two. Now let's try compound B, 2-propyl heptanal. We see that it ends with al, so we know it's an aldehyde. The an indicates that everything else is single bonded. The hept tells us that there are seven carbons. Let's draw out those seven carbons. Then we're going to put our aldehyde on one end or the other. Again, it doesn't matter which end. The next step is to add our substituents. In this case, we have on carbon 2 a propyl, which means a three-carbon chain coming off of position 2. And finally, we add in all of the correct number of hydrogens, making sure that there are four bonds on each carbon. Be especially aware of whenever you see a double bond that you do not put too many hydrogens in. I chose this compound for a specific reason. I wanted to show you that even though there is a longer hydrocarbon chain, we had to go with the shorter name, heptanal, because the aldehyde has such a strong priority. That is our naming and drawing of aldehydes.